Inside this video, I'm going to teach you guys 10 AutoCAD tips that every single survey drafter should know. My name is Jason Hunt. I'm a professional AutoCAD trainer. I run the only land survey drafting program in the world. And before we jump into things, I want to let you guys know if you're interested in my land survey drafting program, please click the link below, book a call with me. Or if you're an AutoCAD drafter in any other field and you want to learn how you can go freelance with these skills and make an extra five to $10,000 per month using the exact same CAD skills that you already know right now, go ahead and book a call with me because I run a program just for that where we teach people how to implement my three-step freelancer system through direct outreach, paid ads funnel, and social funnel system. Again, implementing basic business structure into your CAD drafting to go get clients. Again, 99% of CAD drafters don't even know how to do this. So if you want to learn how to do that too, click the link below, book a call. Let's jump into things. So number one is going to be always select your object before modifying it. I'm going to actually open up CAD as we're doing this to show you what I mean by that. So in any CAD drawing, right, let's just say I have a circle. If I go ahead and put this circle right here, and I'm going to move it to the right. If I'm going to move it, I need to, again, let's do it the right way the first time. Selecting it first, hit M for move, highlight the base point, move it over, done. Here's the incorrect way. And if you're doing it this way, do not stop it, okay? If you go ahead and type the command first. So all these modified tools, if you hit this first, do not do that. You always want to make your selection first, then your modification, not your modification, then your selection. Here's what the wrong way looks like. Hit M for move, select the object, then press enter, select my base point, then move it over. See how it's two extra steps for the exact same workflow over thousands of hours of CAD drafting. This is really going to slow you down. So uh, do it the right way, okay? Now you know. So number two is going to be always work in dark mode. And so here's why you want to enable it and also how. Um, dark mode in AutoCAD is really good for your eyeballs. Listen, if you're standing at the computer screen all day, uh, you want a little bit of relief on your eyes. In fact, I have a really nice monitor. I recommend investing in one of those OLED monitors. The pixels, when they turn black, actually turn off. And so it's not a strain on your eye. Also, these monitors tend to be a lot dimmer than um, a regular like TN panel. You can look up the difference between OLED or TN and uh, you know, just see if that's an option for you. But there's some really good OLED monitors for like three to 400 bucks that you can invest in yourself and I highly recommend it. But you know, just for saving your eyeballs and having the dark mode enabled, here's how you do it in almost every AutoCAD program. We're gonna go to options. And what that's gonna do is you can go to display under the ribbon and change your color theme to dark. This just changes your model space, not your paper space. And so what I mean by that, if I go to my 11 by 17 sheet, this will still be the standard white background, black text, et cetera. If you wanna make it, where everything is dark mode, here's how you to do that too. You go under options, then you go to colors, and then right here under the colors button, sheet layout, uniform background, put it to this color, 30, 40, 48, and the paper background, set it to 128, sorry, 138, 138, 138. It's gonna look just like this. It'll match with the uh, sort of dark mode of the uh, foreground in the model space. Save your eyes, okay? Uh, save your eyeballs. Number three is going to be using the lengthening tool instead of stretching or trimming lines. A lot of people in AutoCAD, they'll continue to keep drawing lines over and over and over again when really the fastest workflow is copying stuff. So what do I mean by this? Well, um, whenever you have a line, let me just go to make a new layer right here, go to layer zero. All right, if I have a line right here and that's got a length of 100, right? This line right here, and let's say I need a certain angle like this. Okay, if I want to make another line of this exact same angle, I'm not just going to draw it again. Steal the line that you have and then lengthen it to the correct length that you need. Let's say I make this uh, 200. You can use the lengthen tool, L-E-N for lengthen. And then down here, you can look at your uh, command line. Uh, you have a couple different options. The one I use the most is called total, but we can also just type T. And so T for total. Now when I select the total length of the line, 200, it's going to lengthen it to that side. Be very mindful of your cursor because you know left or right, it's going to extend it out this way. This also works for shortening, okay? So if I set it to 200, and then I do the same command again, L-E-N, T for total, and then put it back to, let's just say 75, it'll shorten it to the exact length that I want this line to be. But depending on which side I move my cursor, the left side or the right side, it gets split by the midpoint. It'll shorten it on either side, just like that. So number four, uh, draw your break lines by hand instead of using the AutoCAD uh, break line tool. Inside of CAD, to make break lines, the command that you can have generally inside of the program that's already built in, it really does suck. I'll show you why. Um, the problem is with most break lines inside of CAD, if I do break line, let's do there to, let's just say here, and I have a height of uh, 10, just like that, boom. If you notice this break line, it's, it's the break line, but it also has these like extra bits on the end. And the problem is, is when you don't have a lot of space to fit, Let's say my line was only this short uh, to draw, you know, right here, and I need the break line on there. 
uh, it won't draw it because of the extra length that this requires. So in tight spaces, it's really terrible. Also, the problem is that these break lines are always way too big based on your scaling on the bottom right hand side of your screen. And it's, it's generally always too big. So what I recommend instead is just drawing them by hand. You know, it's very straight and simple. Uh, have your snaps turned on for like nearest. You're just going to go up, down, and back, and then you just trim it. And that's it. And really, if you like this break line of this sizing, okay, what you can do is just save it as a block. You can use it for uh, future purposes. But in the same drawing, if you're using the same angle a lot of the times, for example, in a survey like this, you know, you got a break line like this, another one over here, the same type, you just copy it and put it over there and just change the color of it and you're good to go. And so for single time uses, it's way easier. It's scaled up to your drawing appropriately. It's not too big and it also fits in tighter spaces. So I always recommend drawing these by hand. That's good practice. So number five, setting your blocks to a one-to-one -one scale factor for easier manual scaling. What do I mean by that? Well, inside of a potentially a survey drawing like this, I have this water meter. It's sizing, right? I wanted to come in exactly ready for a one to 20 scale. And so what does that mean? Well, normally when you want to set these up, what you should do, and I'll show you how I have it right now, I bring in my meter, it's tiny, right? I had to scale the size for one to one, one is equal to one. So that means when I want to scale it up to a 20 scale document or a 30 scale document, 40 scale, 50 scale, all I have to do is hit S for scale and then type in the size of my document, 20. Perfect. And it's the exact size that I need. And so, you know, I put water meter. Um, well, how do we work backwards from this, right? To work backwards from this, whatever sheet I'm on, let's say I have this drawing and the scaling and I'm sheeting it up for this size, I'm going to go ahead and draw like a fire hydrant. So I'll draw a fire hydrant at the correct size that fits this paper. Okay, great. Then what you're going to do is before you save it as a block. So, you know, for example, if I have a fire hydrant, I'm just doing the opposite of this right now. If I have a fire hydrant right made here and I want to use this as a block, I just drew it, just pretend I just drew it, right? I'm going to take it, I'm going to copy it, you know, wherever, and I'm going to save it in my blocks. I'm going to scale it down by the factor of my view scale. So right now I'm on a 20 scale document. I'm going to save it divided by 20. So how do you do that? I'm just going to hit scale, specify my base point right here, and I'm going to hit one divided by 20. It's going to be super tiny, but that's okay now because now when I save it, it's on the exact size where no matter what paper I'm on, I can which is it S, enter, put in the size of my document, whether it's you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever, and it's going to be the exact right size every single time. So number six, um, never use single line text, always use M text instead. This is for every AutoCAD drafter. I really recommend doing this. Regular single line text inherently uh, sucks. And here's why. If I go ahead and, you know, let's say I'm going to go ahead and make some text. So text, I'm going to hit start point, the angle, right? And I'm going to start drawing it or start uh, typing in my text. When you type in text, right, uh, text sample, what are you like normally doing in AutoCAD? That's kind of in your brain that, you know, is just inherent that you do all the time. You hit escape. We hit the escape button all the time. And so what am I going to do? I'm going to hit escape because I'm done typing this in. Oh, what does it do? It just deletes it. It's so stupid. And so we have to use M text because it's just so much better for a variety of reasons. When I use M text, I can go ahead and create the size of sort of a word document of the exact text that I need. So this is an M text box, right? And as you can see, I can always scale it a different direction you know, shrink it up, blah, blah, blah. I can justify it left, right. It becomes like a Word document. I can change my, you know, my text, my height, all the cool stuff, just like I'm working inside of Google Docs or Word or whatever, right? And then when I'm done, I can just hit escape. And it doesn't delete it. So always use M text. It's so much better than single line text. There's way better uses for it. I highly recommend you guys to use M text. Number seven, going to be never print directly from your model space. Always use a paper sheet or a layout. A lot of drafters that I, you know, are a little bit older or maybe they're not that uh, familiar with CAD, they'll have their drawing inside of the model space and they'll just try to print it from here and like make a weird window or like draw a, a like a layout for it. Um, we have stuff for that. It's called a layout sheet and it's found right down here. And so you can create these things that literally are sized appropriately for the correct piece of paper that you need. And then we go ahead and make something called a viewport that then scales it up into it. So please make sure that you're using um, you know, paper sheets for stuff. If you need an architectural size D sheet, you can make one for an architectural D size. This is for an 11 by 17 sheet of paper. Super easy. Please use these because it saves, you know, because then you can just save it as a template. And then anytime you need to work on the drawing or add it in there, you just make a new viewport and shove it in there. So easy peasy. And leading off of that for number eight is creating a viewport by making an enclosed object and converting it. So if you're not familiar, viewports, all they are is a little TV screen that looks from my model space over here to the paper space and it's scaled up appropriately. And so if I'm gonna go ahead and you know, delete it, right? Um, the thing is that a lot of people, when they make these viewports, they come up here to layout tools, 
and then under layout viewports and they click this drop down button and they hit rectangular. Well, the problem is, is that uh, we have all sorts of different size stuff. And I always recommend if you want to make viewports, make an object enclose it and then convert it to a viewport. So I'll show you what that looks like right now. So I'm gonna go to my viewports layer. I'm gonna go ahead and make a rectangle for this viewport done. And I'm gonna convert this into the viewport by going to layout. There's a little drop down button right here next to rectangular for the layout viewports object. And then I can go ahead and select on any enclosed object. You want it to be usually polyline object, click on it and boom. Now it's made a viewport. I can zoom into my document. I can go to the bottom right, right here, scale it one to 20. Great. Lock it and hit lock and I'm done. Perfect. And so always make sure that you are making, and this makes it really easy. If you have multiple viewports stuck together or nearby and you need to show something way off in the distance, you got to like sort of notch it in, just make the border first and then just convert it. So much easier than taking the, the rectangle and trying to manipulate it with extra vertices or all this other stuff. Just draw the size of the TV screen you need and convert to a TV screen. Super simple. So number nine is going to be never X-Ref your objects, always embed them into your drawings. Um, this is 99% of the time what you should be doing. For example, a lot of the times people put a PDF or an image inside of your CAD drawing, which you can do. That uh, image is going to be referenced inside of CAD. It's not actually saved in the document. It's pulling from a file elsewhere on your computer. The problem is when you send that to somebody, that file is going to disconnect because you don't have the two together and the link between the two, or you didn't send it over. And so you have a missing XREF image inside of your document. So in order to do that, you can actually bind it. Um, the do, you know, how you actually do that is right here. Uh, so you're going to open your XREF manager, right click the, attack, the attached image and hit bind. Now, if it's a really big image, like a big aerial or whatever, this isn't going to work all the time. But for most stuff, you can just make sure you bind it into the image. Now, when you send over the DWG file, you don't need to send anything else, no XREF stuff or an extra folder or zip file. You just send the DWG, it's in there, it's saved, and it just works. And so um, in the future versions of CAD, I would like if they spent more time optimizing this for bigger file types. But for the most part, you should be able to just be fine with uh, just binding most things and you'll be good enough with that. And then finally, number 10, this can be a little controversial. Um, don't use CTB files when printing. Make your drawings in color and then print it in black and white. And so what do I mean about that? Well, a lot of times uh, you have older drafters who like to use uh, plot table styles or CTB files. And what those are takes the line and as it goes to the printer, it converts it to a different color or shade or thickness. And in my opinion, I think this is a really bad practice to do. Here is why. When you're working with a drawing, um, and you're going to put it onto the printer. If I go ahead and hit plot, you can actually see up in the bottom, top right, um, I can have a plot table style that I can use. And all it's seeing is like, okay, for example, this red color. If I want this red color to show up thicker and bigger on my printer as and convert it all to black and white, let's say black and white, but like certain lines have more thickness, I can do that. The problem is, is that I don't know if my overlaps are gonna occur because when I go to preview it right now, what it looks like right now will be different than what it is on the printer or what I'm working on in my model space is different than what it is on the uh, preview because of the CTV. So I don't know if I'm overlapping until I'm done with the project and I print it out on the on the on the uh, on the printer because printers have a certain you know cartridge thickness that they're printing on. And so you know I think this is a very old school way of doing things. In my personal opinion, I think that you should just draw in color. It looks a lot easier. It's easier to spot things when you draw in color. It's the proper way to do things with layers and proper colors. And then just export it uh, as a regular color PDF. And if you need to make the lines thicker, don't use a CTB, make it thicker in the actual drawing itself. Like I would just make these lines thicker in the actual CAD file, not when I go to print it, okay? Because then there's a disconnect. You could leave for overlaps or you know issues with the drawing or weird print issues, who knows? So make it look like how it should print, print it that way. Don't use CTBs, and if you need to convert it to black and white or grayscale, you can just open it up in Adobe Editor and then just print and save as uh, black and white. That's just the simplest way to do it. So, yeah. And so these are my best CAD tips that I pretty much use on a daily basis to get more work done. And the result, I make more money inside of my drafting. And if you thought this was helpful and you want more tips like this and you want to learn how you can start making money as a freelance drafter, check out the video below where I cover everything that you need to know so that way um, you know, if you want to take your existing skills as a CAD drafter and go freelance making an extra five to $10,000 a month, click that video, check it out. And uh, if you need any help or questions, be sure to send me a message on Instagram as well. And I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can, or leave a comment under this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.